Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Gadgen has put out another devlog, and this one is for a ground map. It is called Attica, and, well, you could probably tell by the name, it's designed around Greece, mainly the southeast side of it. This is another one of those maps where they take inspiration from a specific area of the world and then craft a map out of it. It seems like they have an open kind of coliseum going on or an arena, which is kind of cool. Also, some of the pillars of some of the old buildings that you find around Greece. And also the layout of it is pretty standard as well. There's not really a ton going on with it. So I thought we would have a look in general at that. I think uh, what I've liked about maps overall in War Thunder the last little bit is because of the map rotation uh, filter and also uh, the fact that people can pick and choose what they want to see, it gives Gaijin more data on what people want. And the last few maps have all basically been around the same ideas, and that's probably why. Uh, this one looks like it's going to do exactly the same as what we've seen before, uh, kind of a three-lane setup where there's a ton of hard cover around the place on this one in terms of rocks and in terms of some kind of different contours, but nothing too crazy. And uh, the fight being very much designed around little uh, areas which are pretty much junctions of the map where you'll have to fight. So uh, think about how we've had a lot of maps recently which are designed around this, and that's because it seems to be the ones that people enjoy the most. And since we only have a bird's eye view of the map, I'm looking forward to seeing it on the dev server, which may come out this week or may come out next week. Who knows? We'll find out, I suppose, later in the week. Uh, but looking at it uh, in general, uh, there should be at least some little play styles to go. I wonder how the rocks get in the way, though. Right, let's have a look at the map. Let's try and break it down from a bird's eye perspective and then see what's going on from there. So I thought we'd do something different with this dead blog since they gave us the map. I thought we would have a look at it and kind of have a think about how the game will be played. And also from some of the things. We're going to be using a pen, uh, which is this one right here. Just kind of draw on it and have a bit of fun. But first of all, let's have a look at kind of the pictures of what the map is. So you have this one, uh, which uh, seems to be uh, obviously... Kind of like a temple setup, or, you know, good old Greek ruins, which is something you'll find all over the place. Athens being one of the strong points with stuff like this. And this looks like this area over here, so the Alpha Point. Then you have this one, which is the Open Colosseum we talked about, or the Open Arena. Uh, this one is very obviously this area here. And then uh, we have another one, uh, which uh, has this in the background, which looks like what we saw before. And I'm pretty sure this is around this point. So uh, either the A and B are swapped, or this is just each of the capture points uh, that are on the map, right? And uh, this kind of gives us an idea of what the center of the map is going to look like. But the areas where I'm more interested in is actually these areas here. So we've talked about this before uh, in terms of spawn camping. And this is kind of a, a thing that is always <laughs> discussed. Um, people want closed off spawns. Uh, so you can see that these two spawns here, very much closed off because they have the rock formations that are here, rock formations that are here, very hard to actually look into the spawns and shoot into them, right? But because of that, because you have these uh, rock formations in these places, first of all, it gives people areas where they can hide behind. Um, and also, it means that you have to take specific roads to get out of the spawn. So if you are spawning on either side of this map, so uh, this one or this one or this one or this one, unless this area is opened up or this area is opened up, and unless uh, basically this area here is opened up too, you are going to get annihilated by casts on this map um, and also get spawn camp to all hell. Now, this is, this is something that we've talked about before, um, and it, sometimes it doesn't get through, and I think I just I explain it badly. So when being spawn camped, it isn't about being able to look into the spawn and just annihilating the spawn. If you only have one or two roads out of a spawn, especially since on this side, both of these roads lead to the center, all you need is you need one person who is sat like here, 
and one person who is, I don't know, sat here or even here, and they can like cover both sides, and therefore your spawn is now locked down. So you're able to drive forward a little bit, and you're able to drive, you know, a little bit towards the battlefield, but you still die, and you are technically spawn camped, you cannot get out of your spawn. You just feel like you can because of the fact that you've driven a little bit instead of getting shot straight away. So that is a bit of a problem. Um, that is an issue with these types of maps. You see it a lot on 38th Parallel, for example. It's a little bit better nowadays on 38th Parallel, but it was really bad back in the day, uh, where um, basically you would have like a few lanes coming out of the spawn, but obviously the big rock formations in front of it, but then people would just push through. So the initial engagement was incredibly important on the 38th Parallel, and when I have a look at this type of map, that's what I see too. I see the fact that if, you know, this team is able to push through here and win the initial battle, they're able to go here, they're able to go here, and they're able to sit here, and then any second spawns that exist, they're just going to hammer, right? And then, if, let's say, this team does really well here, and then the other team does really well here, and then goes through, it's just going to be who is able to take specific positions, so this one here, or uh, this one over here, uh, to cut off the reinforcements, like either from here or here, and then, you know, attack Bravo and go in. So it really just matters where the power positions are, and which, which positions can be exploited, which look over these roads, right? Because if anybody is spawning from this zone here, like in the left, you may actually have a chance of not being hammered by something like that, because you have the direct route to Alpha, but you also have these roads here. And I want to know if you can actually use these things, because looking at uh, this one, um, looking at, sorry, not this one, this one here, it does seem like there might be a few roads over here that you can use, or like this area over here, which on this map is uh, this area. And I want to see if all of that is traversable or if you have to actually just stick near the roads. Because if you have to stick near the roads, then that's a real problem <laughs> because it means that it's very easy to target where you are. And you remember when we made that Caspocalypse video and we also talked about how all that stuff kind of sets up? This is like the type of map that is really, really bad for it because you know exactly where people are going. Like, you know exactly, even just looking at the layout of the map, you only have three lanes, and the vast majority of people, after a few weeks, are going to figure out which lane is the best for them in terms of getting to the capture points and in, ter in, in, in going there, right? So one team will smash uh, to one area, the other team will smash to, let's say, the other area, and then whoever gets in cast first, all you have to do in the cast element is look here, look here, and then look here, and then drive your eyes backwards to the spawn, right? It's very, very easy to do it, and that's why casts at pretty much every level is a problem. And <laughs> it's it makes it so it it is very easy to kind of camp on this type of map, not just from the ground point of view, but also from the air. So the hardcover works both ways. Um, it won't looking at like the way that all of this is set up here i don't think it will give any cover against aircraft or helicopters or anything um unless they're coming from a very shallow angle which they could be uh but what this area gives you is a cool capture zone which you know does have access to some cover like that you can sit on but also it gives you areas here and here where you can kind of sit behind and wait for people to come down these roads and hammer. And that's something that is really at least what I look for in a map. What happens after the in initial initial uh, engagement is one, because that's usually something that kind of controls what happens on the whole map itself. It's really cool to see this as well. I want to see what this is. It's probably like a big villa, because you have obviously the gardens here. Uh, hopefully we can have a look around this map on the dev server, but I'm just a bit worried about, once again, the three-lane nature and also the, the rocks, because it really confines on where you can go. And I know a lot of people talk about, oh, well, you know, why, why don't you just go mobile when it comes to SBAs, or why don't you just go mobile to stay away from CAS or to stop being a spawn camp? It's because if you have a look at this map and how it's set up, 
you can't like spread out. There's nowhere to spread out because of all the rocks. So you are very confined on where you go, which is pretty nuts. As always, though, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank GMG Smiley, CD Beans, Chieftain Mike, EMN3 Galaxy, Tulio Pontecovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Ozzy Panza, Alan Hacker, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Sem Aslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.